<laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Between Us Foods. This is Donita, your host today. In this episode, we're going to be talking about tips and tricks of creating choreography. So we're going to talk about uh, the process and the ups and downs that comes with that. Joining me today are two of our very own teachers, choreographers, and mentors from our studio, Sam Yoshikawa III and Kevin Nguyen. So between us, foos, let's talk about it. Cool. Sam, Kevin, welcome to Between Us Foods. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah. Excited. Um, so you guys just did a choreo collab actually yes. in our studio, Monday mm -hmm. Night Workshop. How was that? Like, have you guys ever choreoed before together? No. <laughs> but, uh, this is our first time and uh it was really it was really easy, honestly. It was super yeah. chill. Um yeah. I think it was super like easy for both of us, I can say. I think. Yeah, no, I, can, I can vouch for that. Um, I always wonder, like, when I'm about to clap someone with, with someone new, it's like, oh, how is this going to go? Like, what's their process mm -hmm. like? Are they, like, really into, like, what they want to hit? This, this, and this. Right. Um, but with Kev, it was just, like, we were just throwing stuff out. And it was just like, um, okay, let's do that. Let's move on. How yeah. can we add on to it? It was um, a pretty quick process, honestly. Yeah, like very uh, enjoyable. And like we would go back like yeah let's maybe change this like it was nothing too like uh stressful at all. Mm. it was super mm. chill super yeah. fun and it was just an easy process yeah. I think. cool well before we get into like your guys's collabing process let's talk about personal processes first of all so mm -hmm. each of you talk about like how do you get started where do you even start <laughs> i think choosing the song first okay yeah. definitely a uh, song first and for me it's a uh, more about like uh how I connect to the song, mm. and then from there I kind of move forward. But I think step one is always finding song first, at least for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tend to, when I find a song, I sit on it and I like listen to it on repeat, um, mm -hmm. just to make sure that I'm really feeling it. Right. Um, just so like, I guess it's that first commitment step <laughs> to something I want to create, um, just cause I don't want to do anything like halfway or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really important for me. Like I usually find it within the car mm -hmm. and yes. I just loop it. <laughs> I was going to ask that, like, do you guys actively look for songs to dance to yeah. or does it sometimes just kind of come out of thin uh, air? For me, it's like a daily thing. Like I try yeah. to find music on the yeah. daily, like on SoundCloud, on yeah. Spotify, like anything and everything, just because there's so much music out there and there's so mm -hmm. much like stuff like you discover and you're like, wow, this is great. Like I can make something to this or whatever. Like, for me, it's about like uh, the connection to the music. So like finding mu music is like super important because mm -hmm. then sometimes you find music that's cool, but I don't necessarily connect to it. So like that's, yeah, that's on me. I think too, <laughs> it's just like sometimes there's music that's available on certain streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. And like, mm -hmm. for example, like SoundCloud, right? Um, it's more free and you don't have to like have certain like permits or whatever. Um, so sometimes when I do get stuck, I'll like look up the same artists on SoundCloud and they'll have stuff that isn't like officially licensed, um, but it's obviously like danceable. Mm -hmm. So that's like not my last resort, but like another avenue too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys like gravitate towards certain types of songs, genres, artists? I feel like I go through phases, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually just looking through just all my work last night um, and I was like, dang, it's like, it's always going through like six month phases mm -hmm. um and then when i'm whenever, whenever i'm inside of a phase i try to be like okay let's just stay in this for as long <laughs> as i can and then inspiration comes from somewhere else and then it just kind of inspires the way i move um but i think hopefully I, i'm at a good spot right now mm -hmm. so i think the music i'm choosing um will be like generally in the same realm for some time hopefully and if not then it's whatever but right. yeah i've just seen that pattern over time mm -hmm. what about you kevin um it's tough like i i keep bringing this up but like connection to the music so <laughs> like whatever kind of i'm feeling at my time or like during the time of my life i am in right now i don't know what I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not even making any sense right now <laughs> but uh uh but yeah like it, i have to really connect to the song so it could vary for sure like sometimes it's like um 
slow or like R&B and then sometimes I'm just like I just want to have mm. some fun like I choreographed to Freeze recently and then you know like that's super fun it's super like upbeat and then what I plan to teach on Thursday is super not super slow but slower and it's just kind of whatever's whatever I'm feeling at the moment mm. is more of my music like choice so let's say you chose a song <laughs> what's next usually for you guys mm. um Usually, like, the space I'm creating in. Um, sometimes I'll, like, come up with, like, concepts or, mm -hmm. like, the end of an eight count in the car. Um, but I think most importantly is, like, wherever I'm creating, I have to feel, like, free. Nice. And I have to feel, like, um, just not bounded. Um, and typically, like, if I'm forced to choreograph in, like, smaller spaces, for, like, my room or, like, mm -hmm. at home, home, um, I have to, like, move around to like expand the space yeah, um, <laughs> yeah when i'm like here um and i have like the big room or even this the small one it's like a lot bigger than normal places so that's why i try to come here just so i don't like limit myself so i think the the space you create for yourself allows um just more creativity to flow mm. Mm -hmm. um other ways as well but yeah right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's very true because like uh i choreograph outside my house like outside and i it's like a magical place for me. Yeah. It's like, you know, like something about that space is like <laughs> mm -hmm. super like, it gives me, uh, I guess, inspiration. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have this thing too. Like if I know I'm not going to create at on one, <laughs> I'm like, oh, should I do this? Like, <laughs> is right. this, is it going to be good? You know, all those questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like have said, like there's always that like sacred space where I feel like you've put so much time into whether it's freestyling or choreographing. It's like, things just happen there so it's yeah. like why change it yeah if you, you don't create have to. your environment basically yeah mm -hmm. um so then do you guys basically like when you imagine your when you start creating the choreography mm -hmm. like you know you have the song that you're connecting to and like are you you know i'm assuming you're telling a story mm -hmm. almost right and like does it just come out while you're listening and you're like freestyling to the song or um do you think about it first and then you start moving mm. you know what i mean for me it's uh i definitely just freestyle for like a long time mm. like my process is a little different i don't really start from top to bottom i kind of freestyle and then uh sometimes i'll be like wow whatever i just did right there to that <laughs> part of the music i want to do that and sometimes it doesn't uh come out exactly like that because mm -hmm. obviously it was a when I'm freestyling, I'm so in the moment. Mm -hmm. But like, I can kind of remember how that, how that felt, mm -hmm. and like kind of what I did. So then I kind of backtrack and kind of like, okay, I want to do this here, and then I kind of want to do this here, and then I kind of like puzzle it together. Mm -hmm. So I never really start from top to bottom for me. It's more about like freestyling, how certain things feel. It's like, cool, this is what I want to do here. Okay, how do I make it happen? Like, how do I build mm -hmm. from that? So how do I go? It's almost like backtracking sometimes. Mm. Yeah. And like almost like a blending thing so things don't look like misplaced or it's yeah. like a section here and a section so you here. You have right. your milestones and yeah. then it's just filling in the... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the kind of spaces. blending it, you know? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's like the biggest thing for me. It's like freestyling and then connecting to certain things and then building forward from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, personally for me... Um, I feel like I do like blueprint it like that. Mm -hmm. Like I have my moments, I guess, air quote. Um, and I'll, I'll know what I want to do specifically for that moment um, or how to hit the music. Um, but in terms of everything else, which is like 90% of the rest, um, I, I, I don't try to force it. Like if I'm, um, I guess, stuck or having trouble with just naturally creating, then I'll move to another section mm -hmm. um but generally it's just overall like making sure whatever i'm doing like it comes freely mm -hmm. um because i don't think it's sometimes good, good to force art but um for me it's not like comfortable mm -hmm. and that's what I, like i'm aiming for if that makes sense yeah that yeah. makes sense how much time do you think average do you take with like a class piece <laughs> lately it's been like uh, it, it it i don't know it ha it has its ups and downs but yeah. lately uh -huh. it's been quick like an hour mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but, but i think how i prep for it okay. as well like if i know the music rather than like picking a song being like okay let's do this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it takes less time because i'm like subliminally like you know putting the, things together the music yeah exactly um 
I prefer for it to be short like that, but sometimes or most of the time it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. it's just also knowing ways to get out of like certain funks and whatever, right. just to make sure you create what you want to create. Yeah, um, it depends. Sometimes like I don't really finish a piece in a day. Like I usually mm. kind of sleep on it just because I like it. So like I said, since I work kind of like this weird like uh, puzzle. I kind of want to make sure things blend well and things mm-hmm. like uh, actually like read well, mm-hmm. I guess, or like make sense instead of it being kind of so choppy. So I, um, my biggest thing is definitely uh, just like, fudge. Oh, oh, <laughs> I just double oops right there. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I kind of piece things differently. So I never really finish a piece in a day. Yeah. I mean, I can, like I can probably make something like an hour, sure, but for me to really want to teach something and create something that you is like, like impactful, I definitely uh, like take my time. So like I'll sleep on it, wake up the next day and like work like work out the kinks again and like mm-hmm. kind of like, oh, that felt good yesterday, but today kind of feels kind of funky. So mm-hmm. like I try to work like I guess around it. So it takes me a while to be okay. honest. Yeah. yeah. And do you guys will like working under pressure or like Oh yeah, not <laughs> under pressure. For sure, <laughs> I think the pressure is good. Pressure as is long good. as like, define pressure though, like in a time frame. Let's say it's you're gonna teach it like tomorrow. <laughs> uh, if, when would you start? If I have to teach it tomorrow, I will probably do whatever I can possibly to like set some time aside for it. Um, even if I'm like, if I have something planned mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. with a friend. It's happened before. I'm just like, hey, um, and they don't dance. So they're just mm-hmm. like, I got to choreograph. And they're just like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. I right. feel it. Yes. But um, I think the pressure, like, versus moments or, or pieces that I haven't created under pressure, mm-hmm. um, specifically, um, at least personally, I, I've catered more to the ones that are under pressure. Yeah. Um, not in terms of the way they look, but, like, in terms of the way, like, everything happened, how Process. it feels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think pressure is good, but no, for everyone's sure. different for sure. I definitely think working under pressure is good. Yeah. Everything he said. For <laughs> sure. I've, I've, I'm a procrastinator, so mm. I work under pressure as much as I can. Yeah. Um, not to put it off, but really, it. I, I try to place myself in where my mind just kind of goes like fight or flight. Obviously, mm. I choose fight. And then... It, something gets created you know what i mean yeah. mm-hmm. whether it's like choreography or work anything yeah, yeah. um but so when did you guys start creating dances like choreography like to your knowledge <laughs> that's a funny time to mm. think about yeah uh i think it was like 14 <laughs> maybe it's when i first made my first choreo piece and it's to uh Shoot, I don't even remember. Like the name one of those of high school. It was like homecoming. a dubstep song. I swear, it was. Yeah. Like, dun, 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 dun. I was ten. Oh yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so like you, your nickname back then. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Iso. <laughs> Iso, Kevin Iso. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, that was my first time. Fourteen. Yeah, honestly, high school was. I think. <laughs> I think so. Oh no, middle school. Mm. Yeah, our middle school middle. had like this. I think it was when ABDC was like uh-huh. rolling out the seasons, and they called it. a kbdc because oh. my school was called kennedy oh. and you know, you know. <laughs> yeah every high school um, has that of course yeah if, if you're watching <laughs> you know you know um but yeah i think um that was my first we put like a set together and like it's just really fun to watch because none of it makes sense it's mm-hmm. there's like no flow um but we're just having fun right um but it's a good time to think about because it's like like this is why i dance you know Mm-hmm. Simpler just to times. Enjoy. Yeah, for sure. Simpler times. Um, <laughs> but it's been it's been a good long journey. So right. Yeah. For sure. That's really young. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I was like school. eleven or something. Wow. wow. That's young. That's hilarious. That's like sixth grade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> think yeah. about all the other sixth graders in our lives. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so like, if you compared yourself, well, I guess if you take a look at your uh, journey from then and now, like, um, what changed? you know, generally in your process, obviously your craft changed Mm because that's a given, but like, did you always know how to create choreography right away? Or when did you start learning like your, what your process is and what works for you? Oh, (laughs) Honestly, I think since that young age, I always had like, 
YouTube videos. I don't know if this is the right word, but as like cr- crutches and mm-hmm. like uh, to pull, like straight up just pull moves from because mm-hmm. I was just, I, my dance vocabulary in terms of choreography was just like so minute. And right. I was just like, I need hope. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and then as it progressed in terms of like freely creating for myself, I think it, honestly, I think it comes down to, yeah, dance vocabulary and whatnot, but like your mindset. Because, um, like, this community is a very, or dancing in general is a very, um, like, self-critical art, mm-hmm. as all art is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think just, like, with, like, the okay from, like, your peers and, like, just do what you feel is right. Um, and then with time, it'll be refined kind of a thing. Um, helped a lot. And I know it's very simple, but um, I heard that a lot in, like, pivotal moments of me growing up with with dance um and i think the whole process thing is just a like a ever evolving thing mm-hmm. um sometimes you try things they don't work out and then you have to teach a piece and it's like i just don't like it right mm-hmm. yeah and then you go into class and you're just like uh i'm sorry guys <laughs> you're right, right right um and but you learn from it all hopefully mm-hmm. um so yeah i think the process is ever evolving i don't think i'll ever at least in the future, have, like, a, a set regimen. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. just because I don't feel like it's a... Again, like, I don't want to bound mm-hmm. how I create. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah, because it's changed, right? It's, like, so much. Like yeah. I'm, like, yeah. I'm sure for you, like, for me, it's, like, changed, like, completely. Like, I used to start top to bottom. I like, finished it, like, mm. the beginning to the end. And that felt more choppy than it, the <laughs> way I do it now, you know? So, like, um, yeah, just... I think the process is forever changing, for sure. And, yep. like... Um, yeah, my first times were pretty bad too, so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure, there was trust. Salt. Trust me. Trust, trust. At least for me. <laughs> for me. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to see him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my team will look that up. <laughs> oh, no. Plaster it right there. Just kidding. Um. So, what was? So, what do you think is the most important thing, um, to keep in mind when you're creating choreography? Uh, I always say try to say, uh, to never say no. Mm. So like no, like try not to give up on an idea just because it didn't look right the first time. That's mm. why I, like I sleep on things because like yeah, this in theory like in my head and like um, just kind of what I felt during my freestyle like yeah, that's exactly what it should be. But even though I'm trying to choreograph it, like it's not exactly that. So like mm-hmm. just never say no. Like just like all right, I won't give up. I'm not going to change it just because I can't figure it out. You know, like I think that's a big big thing, and it leads to like you being more creative because you're like how do i do this like how do i like problem solving essentially yeah yeah that's the fun part Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) it is um i've never been asked this question it's always (laughs) like it's always like people asking it in terms of themselves yeah (laughs) um but dang um i feel like it's it's uh well i feel like most times if like um, I'm struggling it it is because it's like I'm like self-critical mm-hmm. um, so at times I'll like take myself out of the mirror uh, w- when I do have one um, just because to focus on obviously not what I look like mm-hmm. um, but the intention the feeling behind it and then refine it if I need to right mm-hmm. um, but I think most importantly just having fun like yeah. I know it's like mm-hmm. super like cliche and I don't think you hear it enough but mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, just having fun with the process and enjoying it in the first place because I don't think creating choreography should be like a like a chore. It's a privilege. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It has its ups and its downs. Yeah, yeah just like, got to be in it. Got to enjoy the downs yeah. too. You got to keep your connection to it, you know? Yes, yes. <laughs> facts. Um, so I want to take this moment to hear from our audience, um, mm, listeners cool. from our Instagram followers, for the <coughs> dancers out there looking to improve or... Uh, get some tips also for our listeners who's just curious about um, the process. So first question um, is from I-L-Y-K-A-I-I-I. I love you, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> um, love you too, Kai. Yeah. <laughs> love you, Kai. Um, well, actually, we're good. How can you make moves flow together? Not that mm-hmm. it's necessary, but it's just a pr- uh Prefink? Not that it's necessary, but yeah. How do you make how do you how do you make moves flow together? Hmm. 
It's a tough one. Uh, I feel like, because I struggled with that a lot too mm-hmm. when I first started creating. Um, it's just like connecting the dots and it's okay for things that look staccato sometimes mm-hmm. or very like choppy, but then to have a, a blend just so like things connect um, was just like actively asking that question um, and how I can like, I always use this word in class, but like how can you like bleed the last move into the next one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, just to make it um, connect when it needs to, of course. Um, but if there needs to be a period, then kind of do that. Um, but yeah, I think also it's like what feels right. So if you're questioning, like, how do I blend this? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe tweak some things um, to where it's easier to get from point A, point B. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, like, if you're really struggling with it and you ask yourself that question or the ones previous I talked about, just just sit down and, and take a breath and restart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I step away. Don't for a force second. it. Yeah. <clears throat> I definitely think like uh, tell with flow is to pay attention to your textures, um, whether it be like because uh, you can make. I feel like anything can really kind of flow together, but how you bl- like I keep using this word blend, but like blend things like um, with different textures can make your flow seem seamless. Mm-hmm. So less of like um, so even if the move is like here and here. Like you can change the texture instead of stick and stick you can be like stick Mm -hmm. and that little like texture change can really help your flow right it's just you can use the same move but like how you you get in between your moves and like how uh uh, and the possibilities are endless yes exactly (laughs) so there's different textures so (laughs) that will definitely help a lot i think in my opinion totally totally Mm -hmm. that question was actually from melody chen sorry i can't read um i read the order wrong (laughs) uh next question (laughs) (laughs) yes um from alley cat 0322 hey alley finding the balance between creating for self and creating for others how i think that's the question is how (laughs) Mm. Mm. that's a tough one just because like I don't know if I'm ever really craving for anyone else yeah, but myself. Something. Like, I think most of the time, like, whether people like it or not, like, I create for myself. Like, um, so that's a tough question because I don't know. What she means by, like, but others. That creating mm-hmm. for others. Or the way I see it, or I can break it down to where mm-hmm. it's tangible, is just, like, creating for others is maybe, like, setting a piece for, like. Oh, okay. That a, makes sense. Like, yeah. a, like a competition. That's just business then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. The dollar's that's right. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe we can. Creating for self Well, I guess, okay, maybe let's say you were an urban one teacher. Okay. okay. Urban two teacher, mm-hmm. right? So obviously, you're. That's a good way to put it. You're creating for the class and yes, the correct. level of that. Like, how, but how do you find balance of like, okay, I want to put mm. my craft out there, but I also want to, like, uh, like mentor these students and help them grow i guess maybe that's another okay. version of that question no <laughs> that makes more sense yeah <laughs> i was like hey now it makes sense um hmm. for urban one at least when because i used to teach that here um mm-hmm. it was more of like and there were moments where i was just like how do i put myself out there or like how do i brand myself the best but like you can't really put your most like diligent and like dense work and present to urban one because they're Mm -hmm. just not going to digest it right Mm. um so it's more of just like at that point it's like okay i gotta like put myself aside and really think about just like these people are here just to like learn how to dance they're here to have fun Mm -hmm. um and it comes down to how can i create something that is easily connected to that Mm -hmm. um yeah it's just i guess i guess it's just like a time and a place thing Mm-hmm. Um, know when it's appropriate to, for lack of better words, like prioritize yourself. Right. And when like the needs of others are need mm-hmm. to be prioritized, and it's like, I feel like that is very of like a very clear line. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So just knowing. Definitely, if you're teaching like urban one, urban two, like you have to make sure you're teaching them steps that aren't too difficult, like not mm-hmm. too crazy. Like you're there to teach them basics, you know, like and that's great, like. Um, you can add little bits of yourselves in that too, mm-hmm. but don't get me wrong. But I definitely think, yeah, like Sam said, like there's a time and place to kind of you have to have to have time to create for yourself, and then mm-hmm. have to have time to create for, for that. Others, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just tough. That's just a lot of time, but you can make time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Um, these are great. Uh, with every process, of course, comes with challenges and blockers and mm-hmm. goals. We kind of touched base upon, touch upon that earlier. Um, but I do want to talk about more challenges that we can expect with grading choreography. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to talk about that in the next episode because oh. um, that is all the time for part one. And also, what are some ways to get over those challenges? Um so stay tuned for more uh, by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Click that bell icon so you get notifications on our new releases and new videos. And speaking of new releases, <laughs> save the date <laughs> April 4th. Spring Tensive is coming up on April 4th, Saturday, April 4th. Um, also, also subscribe to our Spotify. We have our entire season Ooh. one of Between Us Foo, so you can check that out. And also subscribe to future Sweet. episodes. And... Um, Once again, this has been Donita, Kevin, and Sam. We'll catch you on the flip side. Later. See you.